Supreme Court Web Quest by Kayla Pineda and Pierre Alexander Yapo. Morrison Waite is a former Chief Justice of the United States. He was born November 29, 1816 in Lyme, Connecticut. He was birthed by his mother, Maria Selden, and father, Henry Matson Waite. His family was wealthy and a part of upper class. His full name is Morrison Remick Waite. Waite graduated in 1837 at Yale University. Moving northwest, he studied law just like his father and began to practice in Ohio in 1838. He first partnered with attorney Samuel D. Young, then led him to become more involved with politics. Waite was distinguished as one of Ohio's attorneys and was known for his kindness, honesty, and willingness to charge inexpensive fees to his clients. He first served as a lawyer in the Ohio legislature as a Whig Party representative. He was later a Republican, but at this time he did not have high knowledge or interest of the Civil War or Reconstruction era. Waite was named by President Ulysses S. Grant. He joined the council to attend the hearing of the Alabama claims against England for Civil War damages. In 1871, Waite was chosen to represent the United States in its post-Civil War claims against Britain. After settling compensation claims, the U.S. was awarded $15.5 million, and Morrison Waite was the virtually unknown lawyer from Ohio that became a national figure. During the time of the Civil War, Waite gave speeches and repetitions in support of the Union. Interest was drawn by President Ulysses, nominating him to be Chief Justice of Supreme Court. The nomination was a surprise to everyone, especially Waite himself. Waite was confirmed and took the position in March 1874. Waite had incredible management skills, gaining interest from his colleagues who did not believe him at first. In his 14 years on the court, he wrote 872 opinions and even covered the caseloads of his colleagues when they were ill. Morrison Waite had numerous landmark cases. One against Illinois was a United States Supreme Court case that highlights Waite's most famous decision. His opinion on the case supported the right of the state legislatures to enact Granger laws. Specifically, this case involved the 14th Amendment limiting the power of government to regulate business. Some of the cases that involved Waite's decisions were Strader v. Virginia, Springer v. United States, the telephone cases, and The workload increased drastically as a chief justice in the Supreme Court. This drove Waite to ill health and exhaustion. His salary as chief justice was not enough to provide for his family and allow him to fulfill the social obligations of his office, so that he became close to bankruptcy. He wrote the opinion in the telephone cases of 1888, but was too ill to read it when he came to court on March 20th. Three days later, on March 23rd, 1888, Waite died at the age of 71. Many of his colleagues and other individuals gathered to help his wife and children for support. He married his second cousin, Amelia C. Warner, after living in Ohio together for about two years. The couple moved to the city of Toledo, raising a family of five children. His zodiac sign was a Sagittarius. A watchman or a guard is the meaning of his last name, Waite. Supreme Court case, Griswold v. Connecticut. Who was involved? Estelle Griswold was the executive director of Planned Parenthood in Connecticut and was the head of this case. Dr. C. Lee Buxton was a gynecologist and professor at Yale School of Medicine, and he was the partner who Griswold opened their birth control clinic with. There was the state of Connecticut, and then the Supreme Court. When did this case happen? The case was argued from March 28th to the 29th in 1965, and the Supreme Court made their final decision on June 7th, 1965. Where did the case originate? The case originated in the state of Connecticut. What happened? Estelle Griswold and Dr. Buxton opened a birth control clinic in New Haven, Connecticut in November of 1961. The Comstock Law in Connecticut prohibited the distribution or use of any form of contraceptives, essentially making it illegal. Estelle Griswold and Buxton were arrested and found guilty of violating the Comstock Law and they were both fined $100. After their conviction, they appealed it to the Supreme Court of Errors in Connecticut, saying that this was a violation of the Constitution. The court stood firm on their decision, so Griswold appealed her conviction to the Supreme Court. Why did the case go to the Supreme Court? When Griswold appealed her conviction, this case went to the Supreme Court in the form 
of a violation to the Constitution. Griswold argued that the Comstock Law was a violation of the 14th Amendment and people's right to privacy. Decision by the Supreme Court In the Supreme Court's decision, the court was split 7-2 to two, and they sided with Griswold. The court decided that the Comstock Law did violate a married couple's right to privacy and that the law was unconstitutional. They further explained that the constitutional amendments do protect this marital right to privacy in regard to the use of contraceptives in any state where there are laws or restrictions on them. Impact on American Society The decision of the Supreme Court in this case struck down any laws that made birth control illegal for married couples. Eventually, it paved the way for how birth control is accessed or how it is accessible for everyone today. The Supreme Court's discussion of the right to privacy had a big impact on the decision in the Eisenstadt v. Bard case, and this case had also had a big impact on how the Supreme Court would decide in Roe v. Wade. Overall, it is a landmark case that was a first step in the legalization and acceptance of contraceptives in America.